Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Mrs. Hoffman and I'm a fifth grade teacher at Delaware. I'm super excited to be with you today. We're gonna to do even more geometry. We're gonna to talk today about polygons. And again, we've got that word classifying. There's a lot of words in here and a lot of vocabulary. So you're gonna to have to put on that math brain and really get yourself going. Before we do that though, let's do a quick refueling break just to get our brain going. And what I really love about this refueling break today is that it's a polygon. And we're gonna talk about that in just a few minutes. Okay, so here's how this one works. I'm gonna start right here at the star. We're gonna go around this hexagon three times, taking nice big deep breaths in, holding it for just a second or two and then letting it out. I promise I won't make you hold your breath too long. All right, here we go, three times around our hexagon. Here we go, big deep breath in. Hold that breath, let it out. Another big deep breath in, hold, let it out. Here we go again, big deep breath in, hold, let it out. Big deep breath in, hold that breath, let it out. We're gonna go around one more time. Here we go, big deep breath in. Hold that breath. Let it out. Last time, big deep breath in. Hold. Let it out and relax. Okay, got your math brain on, are you ready now? Okay, here we go. We're gonna talk about polygons. Well, first of all, if I'm gonna talk about polygons, I guess I better know what a polygon is. So a polygon is simply a many-sided closed figure. Okay, well, I know many-sided, I get that. But what is closed? Let's see if we can figure that out. Take a look at all my shapes here. You know this shape, I know you do, what is it? Yep, it's a triangle, it's got three sides. Okay, hmm, how about this one? Maybe you don't know the name of this shape. To me, it looks like a plus sign, but that's not quite the math term that we want to use. But there's something that I notice that these two shapes have in common. I notice that every time there's a corner or a point, the sides touch. Do you notice that here too? Let's see if that's true of these other polygons. Ooh, that one sort of reminds me, hmm, it almost looks like a stop sign, but not quite, right? It's close. Oh, I know that one. That's a rectangle, right? That's an easy one. That one reminds me of an L, although again, that's not quite the geometry term we wanna use. Do you notice how all of the corners touch? There's not any open space? Hmm. Ooh, anybody know what this one's called? If you're thinking parallelogram, you're right. Very nice job. Looks kinda of like a rectangle that's leaning on its side a little bit. How about this one? That's a fun one. I have a table that's shaped like this in my classroom. I bet a lot of your teachers do too. That's a trapezoid. Hmm. Oh, that's a fun one. So that's like a little arrow, but again, not the math term that I wanna use for it. And then this last guy over here, again, looks sorta of like that stop sign, but not quite, and not quite the math term I wanna use. But what I notice about all of these shapes is that anytime there's a corner or a point, all the sides meet. That's what it means when it says a closed figure. So I'm gonna show you lots of different types of polygons and we're gonna decide whether or not, or lots of different types of shapes, and we're gonna decide whether or not it's a polygon. So take a look right here for me. We're gonna play polygon or not, okay? So this first shape here, even if you don't know the name of this shape, what can you tell me about the sides? Well, if I look at the sides, they all touch, right? Every time there's a, a corner or a point, the sides touch, there's no space where something could swim into the middle of that. Hmm, well that tells me that that is a many-sided closed figure, which means that yes, that is a polygon. But look at this one. What is, what's missing? What's going on with this? Yeah, do you notice how there's this empty space right here? The sides don't connect. If you've got an open space, then you no longer have a polygon. So this one is not a polygon. Okay, how about this one? 
One thing you need to know about a polygon is that it doesn't have any curves. It can't have any round edges. So in order for a shape to be a polygon, it must have sides and angles, but no curves. So this one is not a polygon. Do you see the rounded edges here? That takes it out of the polygon category. Be really careful with that. No curves. All right, how about this one? It's kind of a fun shape. Looks a little bit like a, like a check mark or something, or maybe even a wonky looking L. What I notice about it though is that it's got only straight sides, so there's no curves. And I notice that all of the sides connect, so I don't have any open sides like this piece over here. So polygon or not a polygon? Perfect, yeah, it's a polygon, good job. Okay, how about this one? Uh-oh, I don't see any open spaces, but what do you notice about the shape? Do you see those round edges? This guy's an oval, right? So an oval is a shape, but is it a polygon? Nope. You're right, it is not a polygon because it's got those rounded sides. All right, how about this guy? I notice it's got sides, all the sides are straight, and I notice there's no open spaces. So polygon or not a polygon? Perfect, it's a polygon, you got it. This one's a tricky one. One more thing that a polygon has to have, none of its lines and sides can overlap. So if you notice how this side overlaps this side, it almost looks like somebody took a shape and twisted it, and now it looks like two different shapes, that means it's no longer a polygon. If those sides intersect, it's not a polygon. Now if we had just half of this, that would be a polygon. But because those sides intersect, it's no longer a polygon. Last one here, that's a fun one. Kind of reminds me of like a little birdie footprint. Okay, so I notice that it's got only straight sides, no open spaces, nothing crosses, and there's no curves. Polygon or not a polygon? Perfect, yeah, it's a polygon. I like it. Okay, so let's remember what makes a polygon. It's gotta have lots of sides, at least three, in order to connect. It has to have only straight lines, so no rounded edges, no curves. It has to have um, no open empty spaces. So it has to have many sides and it has to be closed. That's what makes a polygon. But there's more. Guys, are you ready for this? It's tough. Polygons can be both regular and irregular. So those two words are opposites, regular and irregular. Irregular means not regular, right? Well, let's talk about that. Oh my gosh, okay. So many words here and I know you've heard them before. Take a look at what I've got here. Over on the left, I've got the name of all of those polygons. Some of these should be familiar to you. You know what a triangle is. That's easy, right? Okay, along this next column here, I've got the number of sides and angles. In a polygon, however many sides it has is also the number of angles it has. So think back to triangles. A triangle has three sides, and inside those three sides, there are three angles, right? So any three-sided shape closed it's called a triangle. But then the other thing I wanna to talk to you about is regular and irregular. So regular just means that all the sides and all of the angles are exactly the same. So a regular triangle is this guy right here. Notice those tick marks, that tells me all sides are the same. And if you look at the angles, each of those angles inside the triangle is exactly the same. That's what makes a polygon regular. All sides equal, all angles equal. Doesn't matter how many sides it has or how many angles it has, they just have to be the same. Well, that's interesting though because I know a lot of different types of triangles that look different than this one. That's great, that just means that all of those other triangles, whatever kind of triangles they are, they're also irregular. So take a look up here. There's two more triangles. Do they have three sides? Of course they do, yeah. But what's different about them from here? This one has all sides the same, but these do not. Those two triangles don't have all sides and all angles the same. They're still triangles, they're still polygons, they're just irregular polygons. Does that make sense? 
Perfect. Okay, if that's true, let's talk about this word. I want you to look at the beginning of this word, quad. I don't know if you've ever heard of a quad car before. Most people call them four-wheelers. Yep. So a quad car or a four-wheeler has how many wheels? You got it, four. Well, a quadrilateral has four sides. So think about all those four sides, four-sided shapes you know. You know, um, you know, let's see, a square and a rectangle. You know a trapezoid. All of those are four-sided shapes. But only one of those quadrilaterals has four sides exactly the same and four angles exactly the same. Can you picture it in your mind what that shape is? Four sides all the same. Are you thinking about a square? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so a square, two tick marks on each side means all sides are the same. All of my angles are 90 degrees. So that means that a square is a regular quadrilateral. Okay, so let's think about this. I'm thinking about a rectangle. A rectangle has two long sides and two short sides, but all of the angles are the same. Can a rectangle be a regular quadrilateral? I hope that you're thinking no, because in order to be regular, all the sides have to be the same. And on a triangle, or sorry, excuse me, on a rectangle, the two top sides are the same, and the two left and right are the same, but all four sides are the same. So that means that our rectangle is gonna go over here on our irregular side. Still a quadrilateral, still has four sides, but they're not all the same. Now this guy is really fun. We're gonna make some really cool shapes over here. Any four-sided shape can be a quadrilateral as long as it's close. So this guy right here, looks a bit like a trapezoid, is still a closed four-sided quadrilateral. Okay, how about a pentagon? Pentagons, penta means five. Pentagons have five sides. I am very terrible at drawing this one. If you can do it, that's fantastic. But look at our regular pentagon. Looks a little bit like, hmm, kind of like a house, except that the sides go out to the side here. So when I draw a pentagon, I typically end up making them look like home plate when we're playing baseball. That's what reminds me of a pentagon. But in order to be a regular pentagon, all the sides and all of the angles have to be the same. Do you notice what kind of angles we've got here in a pentagon? Are they acute, obtuse, or right? Yeah, they're right, and all five of them are the same size, obtuse angle. All right, so five sides all the same. Take a look at these irregular ones. These are fun. That one kind of looks like a tooth. I don't know. That looks like it reminds me of a slide. I think that would be really fun in the summer to slide down that if it was a water slide into a pool. I can just see myself flying off the end of it into the water. That would be a lot of fun. Okay, let's look at our hexagon. This is the one that kids typically have a really hard time with. So I'm gonna give you a little trick. First of all, how many sides does a hexagon have? Yep, six. Okay, so think about the way the word six looks when you spell it. S-I-X, right? Now, X is a letter we don't use a whole lot, but when I look over here at the word hexagon, it also has an X. So if I can remember that the number six has an X, and hexagon has an X, then that will help me remember that a hexagon is a six-sided shape. So look how it looks compared to this pentagon. Take a look. Do you remember this shape from earlier when we did our refueling break? We had a hexagon in our refueling break. What do you notice about all the sides? Yep, they're all the same. What kind of angles do we have? Perfect, they're obtuse, all the same, you got it. Um, so this side, this guy has six sides all the same. Take a look at these different shapes. Those are fun. I like to draw irregular shapes, I'm much better at those. But again, I've got six sides, so let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. I wonder how many different hexagons you could make that are irregular. That would be really fun. Okay, octagon. This is the one that reminds me of that lovely little sea creature with eight arms. Octagons have eight sides, just like an octopus has eight legs, right? And this is the one that a lot of times kids go, oh, it's a stop sign. Well, it's shaped like a stop sign, but that's not what we call this in math. We call this an octagon, right? So an octagon has eight sides. In order to be that perfect regular octagon, it's gonna look exactly like a stop sign, but it's gonna have eight sides all the same and eight angles all the same. But check out these irregular ones, they're really fun. This reminds me sort of like of a spaceship. 
I don't know, I could just see it flying away with little aliens in it. And this one, that's what an octagon looks like when I try to draw it. I'm terrible at this. So eight sides, let's see if you can count them with me. We're gonna start up here on the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Still an octagon, but it definitely doesn't look as pretty as this one does, right? Yeah, I tried. Okay, how about a decagon? So you know decimal, and you know that a decimal is a part of a word, or part of a number, and so you know that, it, that some decimals are tenths, right? So a decagon, deca is 10 sides. Whew. So again, take a look, we've got eight sides. Let's look at what a decagon looks like. Ooh, do you see how similar it is to this one? They're very close. Here we go, 10 sides. Let's start at the top and let's count them. All right, here we go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten 10 sides all the same size, 10 angles, all the same. Those are some really big obtuse angles. Take a look at these guys though. These are really fun. That one kind of reminds me of like a little monster trying to chomp down on something. I think these are really fun. I want you to have some fun at home drawing different kinds of polygons. Try to do those regular polygons, but then see what kind of shapes that you can make out of these. One of the things I like to do with them is after I draw them and I label them, then I sometimes try to make little designs or pictures out of them. So you might make it a little monster. This could be his eyes up here and these could be his little teeth and he's chomping down. That's just a fun project you could do on the side. Make sure you label those um, different polygons first. Okay, so triangles have three sides. Quadrilaterals have four sides. Pentagons are five-sided. Hexagons are six-sided, remember that X. Octagon, remember the octopus has eight sides. Don't call it a stop sign, be careful with that. Decagon, deca meaning 10, okay? All right, so try this with me. We are going to classify some polygons. So I'm gonna give you a set of polygons. Now what's really interesting is that both of these polygons are the same type of polygon. In, either, in other words, they're either both triangles or quadrilaterals or pentagons. So we're gonna determine what kind of polygon it is, and then we're gonna determine which one is regular and which one is irregular. So to figure out what type of polygon it is, what do I need to know? What, what, what do I have to know? Yeah, I have to know how many sides it has, don't I? Okay, so let's start with one of our polygons and let's count the number of sides. I'm gonna start with this one right here, and I'm gonna start with the side on the top. You have to be really careful when you're counting sides not to accidentally count one side twice. So if I was using a piece of paper and a pencil, I would probably put a mark, a tick mark, on all of those sides that I've counted to help me so that I don't accidentally go around twice or something. It happens. All right, so here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. Okay, so that polygon has eight sides. If that one has eight, that means this one has eight as well. So I'm thinking about the name of an eight-sided polygon. It reminds me of a sea creature that I know. Are you thinking octagon? I hope so. If you are, you're right. Both of these are octagons. Okay, one of them is regular, which means all the sides are the same, and all the angles are the same. And one of them is irregular. So which one is regular, the one on the left or the one on the right? Perfect, the one on the left is regular. If that's true, the one on the right must most definitely be irregular. Notice it does not have all angles and all sides the same. These two are clearly longer than this one right here. All right, try this set. Hmm. How many of you were tempted to say square and rectangle? You're right, they are a square and a rectangle, but all four-sided shapes go in one category. What is that category? Think about that word that means four, because I noticed that these have four sides. It's a hard word to say. Are you thinking quadrilateral? If you are, you're absolutely right. Say that word quadrilateral, quadrilateral. Yeah, great job. Okay, one is regular and one is irregular. Remember regular means all sides and angles the same. Which one is regular, left or right? Yep, very nice job. That first one is regular, the second one is irregular. Who knew? All right. Take a look at this one. Ooh, a little bit tougher. We're gonna have to count the sides of this one. Hmm, I think I'm gonna count this one. 
And I'm gonna start right here with this little tiny side. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Five-sided shape. Looks a little bit like a house. Are you thinking pentagon? If you are, great job. Which one is regular, which one is irregular? Remember, in order to be regular, all sides must be the same. So what are you thinking? Which one is the regular polygon, left or right? If you're thinking this one on the right, you're absolutely correct. That first one is irregular, and our second one is regular. Very nice, last time, try this one. Oh, there's that L shape from the beginning again. Remember I told you it was a, a fancy shape, but we weren't gonna call it an L? Let's figure out what the name of this shape actually is using our math language. So let's start here. Let's count the sides. That familiar is a very familiar shape. I feel like we've used it a couple times today. Hmm. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. There was a trick for remembering what a six-sided shape was. To remember what it was, had something to do with an X, right? A six-sided shape is called a hexagon. So that L is called a hexagon. Isn't that interesting? Let's count the sides of that one just to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six. Huh. Who knew every time you made that big block letter L that you were actually making a hexagon? When you get time, try this one. Make a block letter T, a capital T, and count how many sides that one has. I think you'll be really interested. All right, which one is regular? Which one is irregular? Let's see if you got it. Did you say the first one was regular and the second one was irregular? If you did, give yourself that nice big pat on the back. You did a great job. Okay. So how can we do this at home? Guys, look outside, look out your window. Anytime you are out walking in the park, walking in the neighborhood, you're seeing polygons everywhere. If you live near a school, you've probably seen this a lot. This is our crosswalk sign, right? Take a look at this shape right here. Let's look at how many sides it has. One, two, three, four, five. That's a pentagon, right? If this had no curved edges, it would have four sides and it would be a quadrilateral, wouldn't it? Look, here's our stop sign. What's the math term for that word? What kind of polygon is that eight-sided shape? Yeah, it's an octagon, great. Okay, take a look at this one. Now we have to imagine that these are all straight, straight points and not curves, right? But there's actually one polygon here, there's another one here, and another one here. See if you can name all of those polygons. So anytime you step outside and look at those street signs, they're all different types of polygons. See if you can classify them or name them. Write them down or draw them on a piece of paper and see what you come up with. Another really cool activity that I like to do at home, um, and sometimes I have my kids do this in class, it's really fun. We make a polygon man or a polygon robot. Now here's the catch. When you draw your polygon, you can only, your polygon robot, you can only use polygons, so don't put any circles. I know it's really tempting to put circles for eyes. Don't do that. You're gonna draw your polygon robot. This one looks more like a polygon man. And you're gonna just draw him in pencil or in a marker, keep him completely blank, and keep him completely white until you're done. When you're done, then you're gonna color all the similar polygons the same color. In other words, any quadrilateral, Maybe you color them blue. Maybe you take any triangles and you color all of the triangles yellow. You could take all of the hexagons and color them red. You choose. But in order to make sure we're practicing that math and not just doodling and drawing, we wanna make sure that on the side we write down what our shapes are and what color we've made them so that we can be sure to make sure that we're matching the right polygons with the right name. Whatever you choose to do, have fun with it. Send your teacher a picture of that polygon robot. It would be really, really fun. Just as a reminder, today's code word is tiger. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day. Bye.